Hello, and welcome back to Fire Essence Gaming. My name is Ben, and today we're going to continue on with Suzerain. So last time out, we went to the Benfi Festival, we have our first orders to the secret police, and decided to modernize our military. So, let's go and pick it up here. Um, take a look at our country overview. For the military, we just have the modernization program as an active policy. And an adequately equipped mil uh, yeah, adequately equipped military as a nice middle ground, I guess. Cool. All right, uh, let's take a look at the report, then we'll hit the news. So L1 Railway nears completion. The L1 Railway running from Holstor to Lockhaven is mostly complete, with final preparations being made for the opening. Under all construction guarantees, the timely delivery of all contractual obligations. Holstor to Bats will be closely linked to the country's biggest port in Lockhaven. Businesses in the region are expected to gain a significant boost and already negotiating rail transport contracts for the transfer of goods. Alright. Yeah, building that railway may very well have been a mistake, but we'll see if we can overcome it later on. But for now, let's check out uh, the whole sort of post here. Major military overhaul. The Ministry of Defense has announced a new ambitious military modernization plan in order to solve the outdated equipment issues and other shortages in the armed forces. Defense Minister Yosef Lancy appraised the administration for its resolve to form a face that can adapt to the challenges of new age in warfare. Our nearby enemies won't dare face the reformed military might of Sordland in the future, said Lancia in a formal announcement. To meet the equipment and structural demands in the military industrial complex, intentional arms contractors have been contacted. The general staff made no comment regarding the changes. And Sordland today, second Kantanan satellite in space. Chairman Leon Malinov, no, Malenev, sorry, addressed the world announcing the second successful satellite launch from the Rostonur Air Base, which has now reached low Earth orbit. Chairman praised the scientists and the UCOSM that allowed the country to reach space a second time. The functionality of the satellite was confirmed when radio contact was established after deployment. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Alright, so... Well, let's go ahead and head to Agnolia to see if we can't uh, re-up our alliance here. Alright, Southern One's flight from Holstor to Stallport took three hours, but went very smoothly. We're about to touch down. David left his seat, came over while Simon was enjoying his newspaper. Yeah, looks like we're about to land, Mr. President. I looked outside. I could see Heliland, the island in between Falks and Magnolia. So many conflicts over a small piece of land. The island can barely sustain itself without outside help. I don't blame them. It is in a very strategic position. Yeah, certainly. If you have the Heliland, that means you're in control of the whole Volgos Channel. I suspect it'd be one of the topics Mr. Van Horton will bring up as bargaining chip. We must be careful. Hellion might be under, con under the control of Agnolia, but the international community has yet to recognize it, for a good reason, too. Nobody wants to make an enemy of Falkson, especially because of the support of the United Quintana and CSB. I don't care who we're against. We'll cross the bridge when we come to it. We should try to look at the bigger picture. Simon folded his newspaper, got up from his seat, and sat right next to us. Yeah, aside from the point of Hellion, we need to be careful with the additional quests. According to the deal that was negotiated so far, they want to sell us their steel for higher price, and they are requesting easier access to our agricultural market. In return, they are promising cash flow and investments, especially in the island region. Yeah, it's not hard to guess why. Precisely, Agnolia and Abraham's in island region make up a good chunk of the region's economy now. During the initial negotiations, they have brought up the topic of immigration many times. The fact that we've relaxed our immigration laws will help tremendously. Let's see if we can shake hands on it. The pilot made an announcement that the descent had started. David and Simon went back to their seats. I took another look outside the window. I could see Stallport, the capital city of Agnolia. The large dockyards of the city and canals appeared closer as our descent continued. Stallport was certainly a fitting name due to stall meaning canal. A couple minutes later, we finally touched down. The plane parked. I took a final look out from my window. The welcoming ceremony from Magnolia was waiting along the red carpet outside. After the guards made their way out, I exited the plane. I waved at the crowd that gathered. There were many camera flashes. I started to make my way downstairs. Prime Minister Van Horten was nowhere in sight. Instead, I was greeted by the foreign minister. After handshakes and a couple of photos, I moved to the car where Serge was waiting to make our way to the palace of Prime Minister. Good day, sir. I hope the flight was comfortable. Ah, yes, it was. Thank you, Serge. Wait, wouldn't have he also have been on the flight? Uh, he's probably just been flight. I got in the car and we made our way through the foreign streets. Our convoy was protected by Swordish and Agnolian guards in their vehicles. We began driving by the highway beside the port and saw dozens of dockyards and ships anchored. Some of the ships and machinery looked old. The city itself looked very gray and grim. Buildings had a touch of Rumberg's famous Monarchian architecture with a mix of Swordish signature domes on the older ones. 
We are now on the main road to the office of the Prime Minister. Yeah, looks like they're not too up to see you, sir. Search pointed at the crowd that gathered on both sides of the street. It was a protest. They're shouting and yelling at our convoy. Some of them held signs written in Sornish. Sorland must pay its debts to Agnolia. You know, I never knew Agnolians were so ungrateful. Not everyone sees great leader like you every day. Uh. There have been so many issues in Sorland. I don't know if I can call myself a great leader. Sir, you know things important, but not in this case. They are always scared of Sorland's potential. Now they are afraid that a lion leads Sorland. They are afraid of you. Not just that, but you are a man selfless enough that you would pay for your driver's children. A true leader, I dare say. <laughs> How's little Anton doing? He's fine, sir. A strong boy. Taken after his namesake, for sure. Convoy starts slowing down. We've arrived, sir. The car continued through the gates while the security vehicles went the other way. We finally came to a stop in front of the door. Search left the car and opened the car door. I exited and began walking to the door. Dozens of press and the Prime Minister were waiting for me. I saw the PM much more clearly as I needed the door. He was shorter than I thought. Mr. President, welcome to Agnolia and to the beautiful city of Southport. <laughs> Thank you so much for the warm welcome. It is great to be here. He reached out for a handshake. Press Serrano has been waiting for this moment. We shook hands and I went for a hug, which was received well by the Prime Minister. The press went wild and took more pictures. He gestured to the entrance of the 200-year-old Parliament building. This way, please. We answered and the press followed us inside. I'd like to present you with a gift as a sign of friendship between our countries. The assistant showed up immediately with a large glass box in her hands. It contained a single parchment inside. This here is one of the first treaties written in between Sorin and Agnolia. May it mark the renewal of our friendship today as well. I hope so, Mr. Van Horten. Our photos were taken again. I gestured at one of my retainers who's holding our gift to the PM. Uh, I think I did this one last time and it went over, so we'll do this again. Because why would I give him a dog if he's scared of dogs? And who the hell cares about our, our constitution? So, our gift is an ornamented uh, yeah, ceremonial sword made of sword of steel. Ah, excellent specimen. This must be hundreds of years old. It looks like this is sword of steel as well. Very fitting, thank you. Cameras flashed once again. Let's go to my office. Follow me. I followed him and we entered the office of the Prime Minister. It was a room of wooden, minimalist decoration. It was far more modest than I expected. We sat down. He leaned back and made himself comfortable. Oh, sheesh. I think we were done with the ceremonies. <laughs> I was just about to say the same. I've not found it easy either. Eh, it's one of the tougher parts of our job. We got up from share and moved over to the bar. There were many varieties of liquor. Would you like a drink, Mr. Rain? I wouldn't mind some magnolian vodka. <laughs> you know your drink. He poured the drinks, gave mine to me before sitting down again. True gentleman, I can respect that about you, Mr. Horton. This is how we do things in Magnolia, Mr. Rain. I appreciate the kind words, but flattery alone won't explain me this day. First of all, I would like to say that I've been watching a recent change to the immigration policy. I'm glad that you've decided to keep it relaxed. Immigrants are very important for beneficial economical development, and we believe that very much in Magnolia. It is reassuring to see sort of move into a more modern direction. Thank you. He took a sip from his vodka. So tell me, Mr. Vane, is Sword a reliable trading partner with Magnolia? As long as Magnolia is a reliable trading partner. I can assure you, we are. Van Horton leaned back further in contemplation. So, what's it going to be? First of all, if we shake hands on it, this agreement is going to be really beneficial for both of us. We should be able to solve your recession in no time with the investment and money coming, uh, flow coming from us. This, as you know, on top of the reduced tariffs for trade in between our countries. Of course, in return, it's discussed between my people and your people before you allow us privileged access to your agricultural market. You will be buying steel from us for a higher price, which is a small price to pay, really. That is the deal. What do you say, Mr. Rain? Alright, so the guide says to pressure him to lower the tariffs. So, this isn't a beneficial deal for Swordland. You went through all this effort to come and say no to me. You're throwing away many months of work down the drain. This is a mistake. I can't agree to the higher prices. We prefer to continue with the current steel deal. We believe that Sodan has been given an unfair advantage for too long because of previous agreements. We can no longer accept this, Mr. Dane. 
A lot of people believe that we have been overshadowed by Sodlin. I am here to fix that. It's a beneficial trade for both of us, nonetheless. Is there no room for discussion? We don't want to lose our cooperation with Sodlin. Maybe I can agree with the old prices. I'll offer an alternative for the sake of our history together. As you know, Hillyland has long been contested between Agnoli and Foxen. You know how the international community does not recognize the rightful claim on the island, including Sodlin? Wouldn't it be good that Sodlin finally announces the recognition of Hillyland as Agnolian territory? If you do that, we'll have a deal. Okay, that's exactly what it says to do, so we're going to do it. I agree, Sordon will recognize the island. <laughs> Excellent. Before we dive into the paper for the trade deal, I want to offer you another possibility. I would like to expand on a newly found partnership. We have regional forces like Romberg that have been imposing danger on both of our countries. I'm of the mind that we must unite, so... By the powers bestowed upon me as the Prime Minister of Agnolia, I'm offering military alliance between Sordon and Agnolia. What do you think? And we definitely need to do that. So, I accept. That's a section to hear. Our ministers will go over the details later. Well then, he stood up from his chair. We must continue the official program. As you know, we'll pay a visit to our founder's grave for another ceremony. Afterwards, we'll move on to the steak dinner. Alright, after you. As soon as we left the office, I briefed Simon and David on the outcome of the meeting. The rest of our state trip was full of fake smiles, handshakes, incredibly long ceremonies, and even longer meetings between our ministers and their counterparts. When we came to the end of the trip, the way back was mostly silent, and I couldn't help but let out a sigh of relief when we touched down in Holzor. It's time to discuss the good news. Sweet. Alright. So, country overview here. We've got a recovered trade volume. Recent successful efforts in signing a new comprehensive trade deal have recovered the trade volume of Sorland to pre-recession levels. Okay, so that's... Well, I guess it's just back to where it was that's not really a boost so that's why it's orange all right and diplomacy we've got agnolia priority and agriculture market as a orange thing but cheaper steel imports from magnolia as a green which yeah that makes sense nice all right now let's hit the support and we'll look at the newspapers all right report from lenkirk rioters arrested the protests and occasional looting of the past weeks have ceased in the city of Lenkirk. Lenkirk police have reported the situation is now under control and thousands of arrests have been made while quelling the situation. Nice. Alright, let's hit the news here. Right, one from the whole Sword Post. Swordland and Agnolia enter alliance. Swordland is entering a military alliance with Agnolia along with the new trade deal between the two countries which comes into effect on Tuesday. Agnolian Prime Minister Van Horten told reporters that this alliance is a historic development that will benefit both countries economically and diplomatically. He also said this will help both countries stay strong against external threats, pointing out both countries' concern regarding their neighbor, Romberg. Apart from the military alliance, Sardin will open its agriculture market, Agnolia, with a new trade agreement. The deal will also see an increase in trade volume between the two countries, particularly in Agnolia and Steel. We will continue to advocate for continued fair trade between our two countries in a relationship that has been extraordinarily beneficial to both Agnolia and Sardin, Van Horten said. I congratulate President Rain for bringing the two countries closer again. Nice. Alright, Geopolitica, we got three of them here. So, Sordland recognized Helioland as Agnolian territory. With a surprising move, President Rain has announced that Sordland will recognize Helioland as Agnolian territory after his visit to the Agnolian PM Van Horten, sending ripples around the world. Helioland is an island that has been long disputed in between Agnolian fogs and due to its strategic position. Following the Agnolian drilling operation in the previous months, the situation has escalated and warships got engaged in a standoff over the international waters. Regardless of the churn value for this move, one thing is for certain. Actively studying with Agnolia will unfortunately mean opposing Volkson in this current dangerous climate. Alright, next up, New Alliance in Eastern Markova. As a result of his recent Agnolian visit, President Rain and Prime Minister Van Horten made a joint announcement that Sordland and Agnolia will enter an alliance. The ever-changing political landscape of Eastern Markova is about to change again. The effects of this alliance in the grander scheme will mean increased trade and, more importantly, military deterrent against the foes of the two countries. This is especially important following the heightened tensions between Agnolia and Foxen. President Rain's Agnolia visit has certainly been fruitful for Sordland so far. Alright, last but not least, from Chancellor Hagel, Van Horten is playing with fire. Yesterday morning, Chancellor Foxen and Hagel delivered a press conference in Helm about the escalating tensions in Helioland. During the press release, he said Agnolia's unlawful occupation of the island will not stop us from doing whatever it takes to protect our people living in Helioland. He's also made comments on Sordland's support for Agnolia in the dispute, heavily criticizing and condemning both President Rain and Prime Minister Van Horten. Our matters are our own. Sordland is supporting an illegal occupation force, which doesn't refrain from ramming their ships into arms. 
Van Horten is playing with fire, and if he's not careful, he might get burned, said Hegel. Geopolitical will be watching the developments closely. Nice. Okay. And it looks like the only thing left here is to go to Valen. So let's go have our trade talks. Sword of the One's flight from Holstor to Rockowitz took approximately five hours. Despite the heavy turbulence, I managed to sleep a little. Along with Simon and David, we landed at the international airport of the capital city of Valen. Our aim here is to finalize the trade deal drafted between Sordal and Valen. Shortly after our plane landed, the door opened and the sun blinded me for a moment. I stepped outside. I saw the soldiers lined up on either side of a red carpet. There must have been at least a hundred soldiers. The marching band started playing and the soldiers immediately saluted me. I salute the soldiers. Bottom of the stairs, Victor Smolak was waiting for me next to the military jeep with a few soldiers by his side. There are a few reporters on the side waiting with their cameras. He was a tall man, almost as tall as me. He was wearing large sunglasses and attire was a regular suit, contrasting with the military attire of everyone else in the field. Mr. President, welcome to Rakovitz. Immediately motioned for an embrace. We hugged and many cameras went off at the same time. He turned around for a couple of additional poses. I pulled him aside for a couple more poses. Now that the pleasant race is done, let's go. We'll take the jeep for a tour. With another tune from the marching band, we boarded the military jeep. He sat in the driver's seat and I sat next to him. As we started speeding up, the soldiers saluted again. Victor Small saluted back. I saluted the soldiers. My security detail and Victor's security detail started following us immediately along with the team of reporters. We will first go to the city center to see the opening of a statue. And here's the statue. It's mine, of course. We kept making small talk about the flight and the weather until we reached, started making our way into the city center. Weird sentence. Almost every corner, there were reporters taking photos of us. Oddly enough, every single street that we took seemed completely empty. Is this all a big photo op for you? It is a good opportunity to show the world our unity in Eastern Rakopa. We must show our unified strength to Rumbach. There we are. We arrived at the city center. In the middle of a large plaza, there is a covered statue. Lots of people gathered behind fences, and they were waving both Sordalan and Valen flags. Victor waved back at them. My people have been very supportive of this visit, Mr. President. I'm sure you're all delighted to see them. The man came closer to the fences, starting yelling at Victor. My limited knowledge of the basic language, I understood the words Victor and murderer. Almost instantaneously, two soldiers showed up from behind the man, and he was taken away. Thankfully, the sun is up. Today will be a good day for the review. I see that you know how to handle distance. Very good. <laughs> I'm glad you approve. We are of the same mind. See, I knew we would get along fine. We took our places from the statue. The drum roll of statue Victor Smolak was uncovered. The statue was done pretty well, except that he was made more masculine. He was wearing a cloak and holding a sword in his hand. <laughs> Excellent statue. Very lifelike. What do you think? Yes, it's good. Very lifelike. Glad you appreciate the art behind it. Join me for a walk. I followed him through the streets. At every corner, more and more photos were taken. We stopped in front of a pastry vendor on the street. Give me two strudel. The man behind the stand smiled and gave us two strudels. I put my hand in my wallet, brought up some money to give to the vendor. <laughs> Hold up, your money doesn't count yet. I got this. He handed the money to the street vendor. The cameras flashed again. Afterwards, we walked a short distance to the palace. Passing the gates of the palace, we made our way into the main building made from ivory-colored stones. The old guard towers flanked the magnificent main building from both sides. The inside of the palace was very spacious, with a very large chandelier hanging from the ceiling. The grand staircases made from the same ivory stone had red carpets on them. On both sides to the upper levels, guards stood with the traditional outfits of the old basic kingdoms. We finally reached the office of the President of Aelin. The door closed behind us. The interior boasts of gold ornaments on the walls, ivory colors, and various jewels attached to different artifacts of old. As it was customary in Valen, we sat down on the carpet. Now we can talk about our trade deal. Ah, finally. But before that... He clapped his hands twice. Bring the quiche. A few assistants immediately entered the room, carrying a large ornament of quiche, the well-known smoking instrument originating from Valen. They immediately lit it up, and the room was filled with the smell of tobacco. He inhaled the smoke and handed me the quiche. It was probably the highest quality tobacco I'd ever smoked, so I handed it back. He took another puff, filling the room with more smoke. So, Mr. President, yeah, but that's too long. Can I call you Anton? Sure. Anton, tell me, what do you really think about Romberg? They're a threat that needs to be dealt with. I agree with your sentiment, Anton. They are a threat to everyone in the region. 
I assure you that a time will come. In due time, yes. For now, I have something else in mind. I'm listening. He clapped his hands again. Two assistants came in the room with a map of the border regions in between Valen and Solgren. He pointed at the border. Look. Bloods and the so-called BFF are causing problems for me in this region. I know that they are also a problem for you as well. I will not allow these traitors to exist in my border, so I will hit them with all the might of Valen. These terrorists need to be destroyed. I call it Operation Bertrand. I like the sound of it. He grinned and lay back on the large pillow behind him. Here is the deal. I will give you the best trade deal in the region. You will give me your assistance in crushing terrorists on both of our borders. Alright, so the guide says to fully assist him. But we're going to ask for specifics anyway because that's just a smart idea. So, I need specifics. Sure. My spies have infiltrated the BFF cells, and they found Cassius a KA-74. We trace him back to Rumberg. This will not justify my retaliation to protect my country. Worst of all, we also found that similar shipments are going to Solgren. Yes, Anton, you see, this is not just Valen's problem. Let's take a step back and talk about what you will get in return. I propose you a no-tariff agreement, co-investment projects, and oil. In return, you will assist me in destroying the terrorists in my country. What kind of support do you need from me? Can't Valen handle it by itself? Eh, yeah, we can, but these vermin are good at hiding. What I want from you in return for all the money and the resources is a joint operation between our armies against BFF. I took a moment to think about it. Okay, do I need to do anything else here? I don't think so, it just says to support it fully, so deal. I knew I could trust you, Anton. Tonight we will drink. He clapped his hands again. Drinks, dancers, music. Instead of the two assistants this time, a group of dancers and performers entered the smoke-filled room. As they performed their songs, we clinked our glasses to our newly found partnership while uh, sipping the sweet basic liquor. The next day, I returned to Sorland with a hangover. Nice. Alright, well, let's check the news here. Alright, whole sword post. Sorland ratified a new trade agreement with Valen. Sorland ratified a new trade agreement and an investment protection agreement with Valen. This is a significant development that shows a significant normalization of swordish basic relations after decades of troubles. At the most basic level, the agreements will support jobs and growth between the two nations and ensure that Sordon will be buying basic oil for a cheaper price. The agreements will gradually reduce most tariffs and regulatory barriers, creating new opportunities for Sordish entrepreneurs to do business and invest in Valen. Negotiations also included a cooperation pact against the terrorist organization, Ludish Freedom Front. And from the Radical, Rain and Smolak Alliance in the War Against Bludes. President Rain has announced that Sordland will commit to a joint operation alongside the fascist dictator Valen, Victor Smolak. Although they claim that the operation will be targeting Bluish terrorists, the reality is vastly different. Under the pretense of fighting against terrorism, it is well known that Victor Smolak's list of war crimes against the Bluish people has been raging on for a long time. Fortunately for Smolak, he has found a new partner with Mr. Rain, who seems to share the same thoughts about the Bluish people, which will be very valuable for Valen in the international arena. Smolak's list was filled and will likely continue to be filled with numerous covered up attacks on unarmed populace, hospital bombings, mass graves. This is not a fight against terrorism. Instead of condemning Valen for what they have done against the Bluish people over the years, President Rain sends a message to the Sands of Smolak, particularly sending our international reputation down the drain. Is this really a fight that can only affect terrorists, or is Sordland partaking in an ethnic cleansing operation? Will this operation stop at Valen or continue in Burja? Let nobody forget about what happened to the Bluish people in Valen and Sordland in the 1930s. We should remember the Ism incident. We should not forget and let the cycle continue. That is a fair point, but we need their assistance in the war later on. So we had to uh, assist them. But that is also why we keep doing stuff over here to help support the Bloods, because it should theoretically cancel this out. So we don't get a Bloodish uprising, which would not be good. Alright, so in our country overview... Our economy, we have a tariff-free oil trade with Valen, which is definitely green. Alright, let's see. Oh, that was in diplomacy, sorry. Military. Uh, military intervention Valen, just a orange thing, so it doesn't really matter. Economy, increased trade volume, which is obviously fantastic. Okay. Let's see. It looks like the only thing on the map here is in whole sword. So, let's give a speech on the constitutional reforms. 
I came to the Grand National Assembly of Sorderland to deliver a speech regarding the new constitution and ask for the support of the assembly before the upcoming vote. I walked quickly through the corridors, giving my greetings to people on my way towards the parliamentary hall. When I entered the hall, the assembly was in complete chaos, with shouting and cursing between the parties. There was a heavy argument about a proposal made by an MP from the NFP. I took my seat inside the special area reserved for the ministers. Gloria was shouting from her seat at the center of the hall as she hit the gavel three times, each strike heavier than the one before. Order! Order! Saksara Kiebner standing up from his seat, shouting towards the members of the PFJP. Mr. Kiebner, call yourself. Show respect to the procedures of this assembly. Despite her efforts, the argument continued for a couple minutes before everyone took back their seats and finally went quiet. Mr. Kiebner, next time when I tell you what to do so, either take your seat or leave the hall so we can proceed with the procedures of this assembly and continue our duties. Some MPs from the NFP side shouted back at her in protest. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, if you will allow me to continue, she pointed at me. We have the president here with us today. He asked me to give an important announcement. The assembly fell silent. Uh, you have a... Yeah, you have the floor, Mr. President. I walked to the stand as loud clapping started in the USP side. Alright, let's see here. What do I want to do? Honorable members of the Grand National Assembly of Swordland, I'm here today to raise important questions regarding our outdated constitution. It's time to strengthen the executive to enact faster and more powerful reforms. I continued. Therefore, we propose changes to the Constitution to prepare Swordland for a fast-changing new world. We will break the Supreme Court's authority over constitutional changes. I focused on... Uh... Should I focus on unity? The guy doesn't really say anything about this speech, so we'll just have to hope this works. It is more important than ever that we stand united as a nation in these changing times. Call everybody to be part of the change our people have been calling for. We all want to make Swordland better, don't we? Let's embrace democracy and unite under the banner of our people, and surely Swordland will be great again. We will make Swordland great again. Loud noises came from the ESP and NFP seats. I took a breath and continued. Ladies and gentlemen of the assembly, we must set aside our differences. Be part of a new era for Swordland. Join us and vote for our proposal. Let us write the future together. I saluted the crowd. For a strong Swordland, the assembly roared with all kinds of different reactions. The whole United Swordland party stood up and started applauding. Thank you for the speech, Mr. President. I walked back to my seat as many MPs asked to speak. Friends Richter was among them. Yes, Mr. Victor? Thank you, Mrs. Speaker. I would like to thank Mr. President for his speech. We, the People's Freedom and Justice Party, stand in agreement with the need for a new constitution. However, our demands seem to be ignored by the government. Even though we made the reform committee's work possible, it was us who were pushed back from the process. As long as Mr. President continues to follow the footsteps of his party's founder, we will be doing our best to stop this proposal. We do not welcome this attempt to break our system further. I ask Mr. President to reevaluate his decision and not ignore the demands of our people. Otherwise, you should never use the word democratic again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Suddenly, Kassaro Kiebner started yelling from his seat. You must have lost your mind to claim you are the reason for the reform talks, Mr. Richter. You and P of JP are nothing but puppets of Western interests. Order! I demand to speak. Gloria gave him a stare. She looked annoyed. Very well, Mr. Kiebner. Go ahead. Mr. President. He looked directly at me. The Nationalist Movement wants to thank Mr. Rain for his priorities. The National Front Party will not stand in your way. Let it be known that the NFP will do its best to aid with the draft of the new constitution and to reach an agreement with the USP. If our concerns are listened to, NFP has the power to make this proposal pass. We will stand together with any attempt to protect and strengthen our established political culture and national values. Thank you. Xara went back to seat. The chaos in the assembly continued. I asked to speak. Yes, Mr. President. I just wanted to thank everybody for their comments. All right, Mr. President, that was kind of stupid and pointless. MPs kept shouting and responding to each other, creating a loud mess where nothing was legible. Order, order, this topic is finished. We're moving on to our next topic. I slowly left the hall. The shouting could be heard from every corridor of the Grand National Assembly. Fantastic. All right. Well, it's 
good to know that uh, NFP is already on our side. Alright, and I think that's as good a spot as any to go and call it for today, so we'll look at all the reports and move on to the next churn next time. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.